So I guess what I'm trying to do today is just draw out the second Roadrunner in my series of Roadrunners that I'm doing for a friend. And I hope you enjoy watching. Starting with a good old pencil with my Pentel eraser and my lucky duck pencil sharpener. just drawing with the direction of the feathers. I've looked at a bunch of reference images and their wings fold into these longer feathers over the back. And then these short little white and brown feathers. So I'm just trying to make that happen. More white on the belly. Just working on shape right now though. stump here. Maybe fence posts. I'm not quite sure what I've decided. I've seen a lot of pictures of them resting on top of 
logs and stuff though, so I think that's what we're going for. Just kind of drawing shapes I see in light and shadow. Some claws. They're not the big spirits, but that'll work. Here's that pentel eraser. I think we got them a little too wide in the wings here. These are slim birds, so they can you know, get nothing extra, so they go fast. Like a little runner. Give them a bumpy old log here to be standing on, or some kind of branch. Again, I'll figure out what I'm doing with that when I come back down. I can add more texture. This way too. I think Bob Ross used to say something along the lines of it's your world. So in this world, my roadrunners got a branch. Snobbly, weathered, sunbeaten branch. Their beaks look so long because it runs right into their feathers. It's this really neat shape.
see that for the pencil part. What do you think? Does this look like a rubber or tree? I think it does. That'll work. I think that'll work. So I'm going to go back in with permanent marker now and darken up my lines. Pro tip, store your Sharpies tip down if possible. It says it on the packaging now and it's true, it does make your other markers live a lot longer. of the lines of the feathers and that's just following the direction I want the lines to go and I want the feathers to be is doing most of the work for me.
these are smaller. We get bigger as they go down the body. Just got little bitty guys up there. Get bigger as we get down here to the wings and the belly. It's a little more fuzzy. before and I'll say it again sometimes good enough is good enough if it's good enough for you it's good enough okay this is another marker just a permanent marker but it's got a much finer tip
be talking at you when I can just show you, do you? It's kind of hard to be in front of the camera, even though my face isn't showing and not try to explain what I'm doing. Just silly, because you can see what I'm doing. What do we think? That looks like a road runner. A road runner that's uh, sitting on a little sun bleached uh, tree right there. I think that'll do. Still gotta paint the background though. And that'll be this one's pencil and then permanent marker and a fine tip permanent marker and then I'll be using the little acrylic paint to do the background. So let's just pause real quick. So as you can see we've changed locations here. We have more just drawing on my desktop in my uh, studio here and now I've got my easel. Uh, we have some similar style paintings in the background to the one I'm doing. So it's basically the same concept with this one. Um, you know, with black and white image, and then we're going to do kind of the pop art style. So I already did a blue Roadrunner. This one's going to be a yellow background. I'm actually going to be using two colors. It's a deep hue cadmium yellow and a cadmium orange hue. So cadmium means it's pretty toxic, but it's such a pretty color. So, and what I've usually been doing is directional lines that kind of go up and down to give this a feel of like a little bit of texture like barn wood and I'm also going to water my paint down just a little bit just good old water I'm not using a gel medium or anything like that to help it flow over the canvas a little more nicely and uh, that way I can layer my colors up instead of doing them all in one go so that's what we're doing now with this Roadrunner also between takes I decided we were off balance a little bit so I uh, added another branch up here, that way we've got this nice sort of diagonal to it. It didn't have quite that same balance before, so I like it better with this, with another branch up here. So that's, that's how we're doing it, because, well, again, when it's your world, you get to decide where you want to put sticks, I guess. <laughs> Plus, I think the Roadrunner looks a little, a little happier that way, doesn't he? He's got more, more life in his world. using an angle brush, which I usually use because I can get nice straight lines. And the two paints I'm using are right here. They're both Liquitex Basics Acrylics, which are a really great, uh, less expensive paint that is still very high quality. Um, and they have these handy things on the labels. So let me get a little closer and show you. This shows you the level of opacity and color fastness, which is um, well, opacity means how uh, transparent or not it is, so this is, this is shown like half, so it's not very sheer, but it's also not very opaque, so it's just a nice medium coverage. I'll, still, I'll probably have to do more than one coat. Um, so yeah, the, I really like these cadmium hues, and I really like Liquitex Basics, so um, I keep them around a lot, and I think they've been working very well for all of these style paintings that I've been doing, so yeah, that's what I'm using. So the rag under my hand is just because I have this watered down. Um, before I got paint on the brush, I dipped it in my rinse water. So that's, that's all that is, just to prevent dripping. I'm painting the side of the canvas because they look better with the edges covered. Just look a little more finished, even though this is a canvas board and it shouldn't make much of a difference. I like to do it anyway. Just a nice little personal touch, I guess. If you're hearing funny noises in the background, my husband, I think, is singing to the dogs. I don't, I, I don't know why I don't ask these questions anymore. Yeah. 
and if you watched my other brow burner video, you'll know that I'm trying not to leave any harsh lines of paint that aren't up and down. So in order to do that, I really gotta keep my brush moving or I leave lines where I don't want them. Because I want up and down marks only just because that's the style choice I'm making here. You don't have to worry about that. That's not the way you want yours to look, whatever you're doing or painting. I just, it's something that I like to do. Like I said, it's not, not really even wood grain, it's just some nice directional color. Because, like I said, when I was drawing out the Roadrunner, you know, it can just let the lines do the work for you. I didn't, uh, I didn't draw a roadrunner. I drew lines going the directions that roadrunner feathers go, and the direction that roadrunner beaks go, and the direction that I wrote branches. I want branches to go, but I didn't draw branches. I didn't draw a roadrunner. I just drew those lines. That probably sounds like some crazy hippy dippy nonsense, but I swear that's how it works. You draw darker lines and more lines where it's darker, and I draw less lines where I want it to be lighter. I'm just very careful with the direction that the lines go, and the art makes itself for me. Hopefully I'm not getting in front of the camera too much and blocking that with my big head or my big shoulder. And my little hair that's getting in the way, maybe. Or my whole hand. These are pretty small canvas boards, I think. These are 8 by 8 inches. Because the person they're going to, either I'm going to have to mail them very far or he's going to have to transport them very far in his car. So keep these a little more portable and light for them. more base we know that it's more towards the yellow or the golden as opposed to greenish some yellows have a greenish hue to them and that's not what this is because it's not what I think of when I think of the road runner out in the high desert I think of you know warm golden sunset colors and that's what we've got here even the blue one I painted the other day I put some purple in the blue, not because I wanted to turn the background purple, because it just made the blue a little warmer and a little less green, and so it still had that sort of high desert feel to it, and that's all it was for. Okay, I'm going to pick this up now because these are very small spots, and it's going to be easier to do. smaller paintbrush, but I already got paint on this one, so why not use it until I can't? And because it's an angle brush, I can control it pretty well and give me these little spaces. When I go back in with a little bit of darker color, maybe I will use a smaller brush just to make my life easier. I'm getting these angles, but you know, it's a pretty good brush. I got paint on it, so I can't tell you if this is a quarter inch angle brush or an eighth inch. I think it's a quarter inch. Yeah, the eighth would be the really small one. This must be the quarter inch angle brush. And I use it for almost everything that requires any bit of motor control. I like fine control because the angle allows me to do that, but it's not so tiny that I can't cover, you know, more than a tiny little bit at once. Basically, what I'm saying is, I really like my angle brush that I'm using right now, which is why it's covered in paint and kind of beat up. The bristles aren't, but the handle's beat up. Always take care of your bristles. That's the whole 
on your brush. Let the brush do the work for you, but it can't do the work for you if you don't take care of your brush. So always wash the paint out all the way every single time when you're done using it and try to rinse every once in a while while you're working the entire brush so that it doesn't have a chance to dry into the bristles. That will just ruin it. Maybe I don't need the orange. Maybe I can just get away with this. Get a few yellow. Isn't that pretty? Again, allowing for some variation in the depth of the tone here. I'm going to leave it lighter in some spots and keep it nice and dark and vivid in others just because it's more interesting than laying solid background. I just have my finger here in the middle to keep my canvas board from moving around because I don't like to use the um, clip on the top of my easel because it gets in the way of the canvas board whereas I can just you know move my hand without having to untwist any knobs or anything so that's the only reason I'm holding on to it with my finger like that so I can push with my brush and not have the canvas board move around without having to clip it down no no, cl no clipping boards no clipping this bird wings I think I'm quoting some some of these rocks on a little bit right now but we're gonna let that go, right? Don't judge me. Please. <laughs> or do. What do I care? The internet. That's what the internet's for. They're gonna judge me and say whether you like this or not, or blah, blah, blah. That's okay. I don't mind. Got a little yellow inside this beak. I can go back and fix that, uh, either with some white acrylic paint or uh, perhaps some silver sharpie. I don't know. Basically, this segment of the video is just me rambling while I paint yellow paint. Maybe I do want some of that orange in there, huh? Just for a little more depth. So I'm going to pause the recording here for just a little bit until I get uh, the rest of this. i got to let it dry just a touch before I can use the orange or I'll pull the yellow paint off. And then I'll start working on the orange and I'll show you when it's done. When I get it signed. How does that sound? Alright, as you can see, if my camera will focus, I've got her signed. And I think we're done. The lighting in this room is not doing justice to the uh, depth of the color. I'm going to zoom in a little. Maybe you'll see it better. Come on, focus. You can see just a touch of orange in there, and it's just kind of glowing around the Roadrunner. Anyway, that's what we've done. We got a Roadrunner. And uh, here, I'm going to set this camera down so it stops being so blurry. You didn't get seasick, did you? Uh, well, if you enjoyed watching this video or any of my other videos, I'd you know, love it if you would click that subscribe button and watch some of my other stuff if you haven't watched any of it yet. So I hope you're having a nice day and thanks for watching.